you know, there are many ponds like this one scattered throughout Alberta. Great place to come and learn how to fish. So I thought it'd be a neat idea to invite one of the best in the business. Phil Rowley joins me and gives us some tips on how to approach these still waters with a fly rod. Phil has been around fly fishing probably for more years than he cares to admit to. So I was pretty happy when he agreed to come out and share some of his vast fishing knowledge. I started by asking him if someone is interested in learning the art of fly fishing, are stock ponds like this one in Mournville a suitable location? They're excellent places to learn because they're easily accessible. You don't need a lot of equipment, you don't need a boat, anything like that. You need a minimal amount of gear, floating line, you can fish. Uh, just cast and retrieve, you can suspend flies under an indicator, you just need a small handful of flies and you're fishing. Knowing how to read the water, even in a pond, is a required skill to develop and it doesn't have to be complicated. I use three factors, comfort, protection and food. So comfort are the, in my definition, are the basic requirements a trout needs to survive and the most common one we use is water temperature because if it's, it's all in relation to how much oxygen water can hold and the higher the temperature the less oxygen it holds and trout being a cold water species like that range so a thermometer um, is always handy you're looking for that 50 to 65 degree range to find fish uh, protection are factors that are going to give the trout a sense of confidence to feed so a rippled water surface that diffuses light and breaks up any um, threats from above they may not see them as well adjacency to structure weed beds points of land drop-offs those kind of things they're going to concentrate fish and of course food, that's primarily what fly fishing is all about, is matching the different food sources. So if you can get a measure of what different food sources are in a lake and choose flies to match those food sources and present them in such a way that they believe the food, chances are you're going to have some success. One of the things we have to pay attention to while fly casting is not only looking at the water ahead of you, but what may lie behind you. But don't despair, even the best get caught up from time to time. <laughs> That's a trophy. Fishing a stock pond can also work to your benefit when it comes to offering trout a variety of different flies. They can be a little more gullible because they're samplers. They're not quite sure what food is so they tend to sample anything. Um, so minnow patterns will work, leech patterns, and even some of the bright attractor patterns that look nothing like trout food at all, but the trout just either treat them aggressively, a little bit of curiosity or maybe a territorial response and we'll take them that way. So that's a, that's a good way to do it is to, is to appeal to that learning instinct the trout has. Whereas a, a wild fish has started life at an early age and knows what food is and has been well honed by mother nature um, to survive to a point that we can catch them. So they're a little more wily to catch. A pond like this can offer an ideal setting to practice the different casts, experiment with a variety of flies. Many of these ponds are located to major cities and communities across the province, so you don't have to spend a lot of time driving, allowing for more opportunity for fishing. Tight lines everyone!